Hi everyone, it's Johnny here and welcome back to part two of how to avoid client creative punch-ups. So hopefully um, none of you out there have had a punch-up with a creative or a client um, but I can imagine that you have had difficult situations where there's been confrontation and arguments um, and if you have seen the other video I'm going to be producing five pieces of content, kind of five solutions of how to improve client creative relationships and how to avoid confrontation or conflict. And if it does happen, how you can resolve it. Now, this one is part two and it is called Endless Amends. Now, if you're a creative, you've probably just shuddered uh, me saying the word endless amends because as most creatives know sometimes it could it's almost the death the death of you um, just emails coming back and back and back of change this change that and it's even worse when you're changing things back to the they were the, the way it originally looked um, and the way that you originally proposed the product should look like or function uh, and it's an absolute killer now can I give you some advice today that's going to stop that from happening? Probably not, um, but I've definitely got some tips to reduce it um, and to kind of resolve it much, much quicker. Okay, so, so why does it happen? So often businesses just, they are very particular, clients and managers, about exactly what they want. And they're trying to lead you there to get you to exactly what they want. Sometimes they don't actually know what they want at all. So endless amends are just them trying to refine the product or the thing that you're creating to get to where they want to go. Um, and those are the worst types of amends, at least with the first one. Um, if they know what they want it to look like, they are leading you somewhere. Um, but when they don't know how they want it to look, you know, no one's getting led anywhere. Uh, and that can be quite costly and it can be really, really stressful. So a couple of things that we need to take away from this. If you're the client or, or you're the business, you need to be respectful for the, uh, for the creative's time. Because when they've quoted that job and when they've given you that price, they would have probably um, based that price on how long they think it's gonna take. Uh, and probably they would have probably based it on a certain amount of amends that they're prepared to do for that project. And when you're continually changing things and moving the goalposts, it's eating their time and ultimately they're making less money if they're actually making any money at all. Now from a creative point of view, if the amends are actually improving what you've done and leading the product closer to, to a more quality product, then actually that's going to improve your portfolio and give you something better um, that you can use to get more work. If it's actually getting worse, then that's not good at all. But remember that if the amends are actually improving and refining what you're doing, remember that you will have a better product or piece of work in your portfolio at the end of the project. Both parties here need to keep the other party happy. It's all about work, good working, positive relationships. So, you know, you need to understand what each other's objectives are and what's the value of the thing that you're creating. And remember, ultimately, you're moving in the same direction. You both want the same things. Um, but again, you know, by changing things over and over and over again, um, and if the project isn't going in a, in a forward direction, then it's gonna cause pain points and pressure points. Now, what's the solution here? So like the other video, it's definitely about conversations and talking about things. So at the beginning of the project, it's about discussing what are the objectives here, what are you both trying to achieve, and what does success look like? What does the project look like, or what could it look like at the end? And this is a really good time to talk about amends and say, look, you know, there are going to be points in this project where we're going to have to evaluate it. Um, you're going to have to prove things. Uh, and if there's things that you're not happy with, we're going to have to change things. But what I would do at that point, if you're the creative, is to 
actual set actually settle on how many changes are allowed or available in your quotation and the price that you've given to the client and this goes for the client as well so you need to speak to the creative and ask at the beginning of the project how many sets of amends do I have through this project and get that really really clear so what you first need to do is create a structured work breakdown and this breaks down all the work packages of that project so right from the beginning from like market research and um, coming up with ideas and mood boards right to the final part of the project when it's all signed off it's all done and dusted it's invoiced and paid for so that and that's your structured work breakdown and you put it break it down into phases or stages of the project now through those stages what you want to identify is when will the client be looking at things when are they going to be evaluating things when will they be able to give their feedback and how many sets of changes do they have now a set of changes it can be one it can be a hundred but you need to identify what a set is now what we normally see a set um, at seed is one email or one document with all the changes um, that need to be made at that stage what you don't want to do is send them over in little bits so an email here telephone call here text message there you need to put it down into one document with all the amends with everyone that's involved in that project in one email or one document and we classify that as a set and normally in a big project we give our clients two sets of amends so what you also need to do in the structured work breakdown so you've identified when there will be amends at what stage how many amends they have and what is the signing off process so normally it could it could be an email it could be a telephone call what I recommend you doing is having some sort of signature based signing off um, potentially emails really good that you have an, uh, a sign off email signature which says yes I'm happy with this this is now signed off be very very clear about what that is at the beginning of the project now the last thing you want to do is then identify and educate each other what will happen um, after a signing off period if they need to go back a stage or a phase so if the client wants to go back or the creative wants to go back a stage or a phase and change something how that is going to have an impact on the project in terms of the timeline and in terms of cost and you need to be able to discuss that right at the beginning of the project so moving back a stage or a phase what are the outcomes or the repercussions of moving back is it anything to do with time is it to do with cost and have that very very clear what those cost implications could be so I hope that's been really really useful like I said I don't think you're ever gonna completely remove amends but having a, a structured work breakdown having a really clear discussion at the beginning at the beginning about what are the stages of the project when does the client have an opportunity to give feedback and amends what does a set of amends look like and how many do they have um, what happens then if they do want to go back and make more changes um, you need to agree with this at the beginning of the project and not halfway through and not at the end that just won't work be very very clear about what um, what the stages are in your proposal or your pitch or the the beginning of a project um, planning um, and identify those key areas and hopefully that should reduce conflict and confrontation um, hopefully there won't be any punch-ups it's never going to get rid of amends I think it, uh, amends are a natural part of a, of a project and you know and amends can be really really good you know if the amends are changing the project for the better uh, and making the process better and creating a better product um, then that can only be a positive thing for both parties so I hope that I hope that's been good for you remember be useful be kind and I'll see you soon for part three
Bye-bye.